What is up, my fellow Cheebits? Hopefully all of you are having a very good day today because a new episode of Food Wars has officially come out. I'm just so glad to see Food Wars back. I'm so glad Season 3 is here. I'm so glad because, as I said my, you know, first episode review of Season 3, I just, I miss this series, and it's just, it's a great watch. It's such a good shonen series, and I don't know, just something about it really just puts a smile on my face. So, getting into it, though... Hopefully all of you have ate something before you watch the latest episode, because like I always say, if you try to watch this series without eating something, you're going to get very hungry. Like, your mouth is going to get watering, you're going to want something to eat, because it's just that type of series. When you see Soma or any of the other characters just cooking and fixing food, even if it's spicy food, you're going to get hungry. You're going to want to eat something, because the food usually in Food Wars looks just amazing. The quality of it looks so good, and you just want to eat something. And so, hopefully all of you got something to eat before you watch this, or if you're like me, I tend to eat while watching the episode. That's usually what I do. I, I really like eating while watching this series because it just it's, it seems like that type of series that you can appreciate more when you do eat something. Anyways, getting into the context of the episode, enough of getting off topic. Okay, so this episode, Soma is initiating his booth plan, basically what he needs to do. And in normal Soma fashion, he has to study on what he wants to cook. He needs to figure out what he wants to use to be able to best the person he's going up against. In this case, as we know, he's going to be doing a Chinese dish, and he's wanting to battle the person that he promised he's going up against, Kuga. He wants to challenge him with spice, spicy food. And so, it's very interesting to see how Soma, once again, he is taking the battlefield to someone's home turf. This is what he has done many times in the past. When someone is, you know, a, an actual, I guess, major, major player in a certain dish, he always loves to challenge them at their own game. In this case, that's what Soma tried to do, or what he is trying to do in this, you know, arc right now of season three he is trying to challenge this man that has kind of built his own recipe his own type of you know food and basically so much trying to challenge him at it trying to challenge him at spicy food so i really like how in this episode you see all these little things falling into place of what so much trying to do he's not just setting his booth up next to kuga to be able to challenge him and try to steal away his customers and build off his popularity he also is putting his face in the newspaper the school newspaper right next to kuga's to be able to challenge him which is just it's kind of scary because it's a very dangerous and risky gamble, but at the same time, it probably can win him a lot of things in the end. Because if anyone's looking through the magazine or whatever, the newspaper, and then they see Kuga, they'll obviously see Soma as well on the side. And then people look at like, wait a minute, why is this person right next to Kuga unless he has like the skills just very similar to him? Because it just doesn't make sense for like the other side of the article to be on Soma, even though nobody knows about him. So that would make people very interested in him and want to find out what he cooks and what really makes him just stand out amongst the crowd and in this case it's not just that either you also have a door he takes another another step further he tries to do everything to where it's kind of he's living off the popularity of the man but at the same time he tries to do a little bit of the opposite where he sets up a booth that seems very pathetic compared to the size of Kuga's booth when you see Kuga's booth it looks like a freaking five-star restaurant like the restaurant it, it, it looks like something you would spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars to just eat in and probably just to get an appetizer that's how expensive it looks in this case when you look at Soma Soma's has a booth set up right there that's a very small booth that honestly you, you don't need a lot of workers for, and it just seems like you can walk up, grab something, and leave in less than a couple of minutes. And basically, in a way, this is probably going to do Soma quite well. And let me explain why. This is why I think his plan is going to work. Soma is writing off of the possibility that when... You know, Kuga has a long line. He's going to have a long line. Regardless, since he has a lot of popularity and many people are lining up, he's going to have a long line. And while people are waiting, let's just be real here, while people are waiting, they're going to be still hungry. They're going to want to eat because the reason why they're sitting in the line because they want to eat. And then you're going to have probably some kids or whatever, they're going to look over at, you know, Soma's booth right next to him. It's like, Mommy, Mommy, or Daddy, Daddy, I want to have something to eat. Get me something over there. And they'll probably wander over there to get, you know, a child an appetizer or something. And then in turn, when they get back in line or when they're done eating from Soma, and they're like, you know what? I don't even want to go back there. This is really good. I want more, and then they'll carry on with their way. And then basically, you'll have majority of the line that's lined up for Kuga probably shift over to Soma because the line is just so massive. And that's basically what's going on here. 
you have it to where, thanks to, you know, Kuga having such a high popularity, that's probably going to hurt him in the end because of the wait time. And then that would mean that Soma could just steal them customers. Hey, come over here and all that. While you're waiting, you can get something over here, and you can get back in line if you want. And so that's what he's probably going to be doing. But it doesn't just stop there, though. Since Soma is a type of person, the way he set up his booth and the way he's, you know, cooking this certain type of food, he's setting something up very convenient. He's setting up something that can be sold and made very quickly and doesn't take too long to actually prep, from my understanding. So basically, you have it to where he can constantly just, you know, keep giving out food in bulk to people and then keep moving them on. There will never be too big of a line because the way his setup is. And that will actually work into his advantage because he can get so many people coming in, he can feed them, they move on, next person move on, and there's never too long of a line and it won't be the same situation as Kuga. Since he only has, you know, he has a big staff, but at the same time he only has, you know, like, a limited amount of tables and everything that he could sit people down with and give them food. So that's going to work against him. So that's what I think is going to happen. That, that's my theory on that. That's what I think that Soma is currently doing in this episode and what he's setting up for. Anyways, let's talk about the preparation. Let's talk about the spicy food. So Megami, she is just a treat. She is... <sighs> I love her. I, I really love Megami. She is just adorable. I've loved her since I first saw her when I watched season one. And every time I see her on screen, I just can't help but saying, like, she's just too cute. And when you see her helping out Soma and all that, she offers to give him a hand and back him up and all that. I'm like... Typical Megami, just helping him out. It just, it was very sweet. And just how she's, you know, tasting his food as well. I couldn't help but laugh because you see Soma, he's just burning up. It's very hot and his lips are swollen. And then when Megami tries to eat it, her lips swell up as well. And she just has fire coming out of her mouth. I'm like, oh my. Like, she's like doing some fire bending or something. That's how savage it looks. So I'm like, this is pretty good. So Megami testing out the spicy food had me laughing quite a bit. And I also do like the, um, the knowledge to spicy food. That's what really makes me love this series is the fact that you don't just enjoy the characters. You don't just get to see beautiful food and animation or whatever. You also learn about recipes and what causes people to like certain foods. In this case, spicy foods. Spicy foods is one of my favorite things. I'm not even going to lie. I eat a lot of spicy food. I actually eat habaneros constantly, jalapenos. I, I even dabble in ghost pepper powder. I'm not even joking. And so basically, I love spicy food. I, I love that stuff. And when I had this explanation to why why many could grow addicted to spicy food, I was like, that explains a lot. I, I didn't know spicy food could actually be a sort of an addiction, and that really surprised me, and so I actually learned from this episode of, you know, Shokugeki no Soma. So that's basically it, though. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How did you feel about this latest episode of Food Wars? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you like my content, please subscribe. And if you want to support me for I can continue to focus on YouTube, please go into the description of this video and support me on Patreon. It helps me out a lot. So love you guys. Have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.